Okay, starting recording. This is Monday. Uh, now we've got March 20 meeting for the D3D, the open source 3D printer, the working team for open source yeah. ecology. So here we have the updates on what's going on here. So here we have Baba Shiel from, yeah. she, we call him Shiele from Hamburg. So he actually prototyped the frame out there and it's the original big frame, which is two feet. And you call that what, 60 centimeter? <laughs> yeah, six to one centimeters. Yeah. Six to one. So tell us, tell us about it. So did you get a cut at at the HSU, or where'd you get a cut? Yeah, now because we have like um, the mechanical engineering faculty with lots of equipment. Okay. So they just decided to go cut it for me. The labor technicians did the cutting. Okay. So they just brought it for me today. Excellent, excellent. So that's good. I mean, you can fully prototype the. Um, the printer as as because you can print the other 3d printed pieces and you've, have, you've got most of the parts right so yeah so we should probably coordinate on getting you set up to do a build now the question is do you have the time um i know you're um, doing some other stuff how much now you know we must factor in like we've already bought the rods we bought the rods for 40 centimeters and 50 centimeters but now this would require something like 60 centimeters even more uh -huh. so if I can get roads, I can just be on it like um, as soon as possible. But trying to get the roads is the is the major thing now. Uh huh. Okay. Um. But the question is, how much? But how much time do you have on your hands? Because I know you're doing some other things. Um. If the other thing is just the resources. If I can get the roads today, I can devote two days, three days, just working on this only. When would that be? Because uh, maybe we should coordinate that because it would be really good to have a verification of this build in Germany. Um, yeah. So, what's your schedule looking like right now? Um, very, very tight. Uh, I always create space you know, on Fridays and Saturdays. I'm always free. Okay, Fridays and uh, Saturdays. I so. Stuff, but not as easy as Mondays to Thursdays. Okay. Okay, that's really good. So, so can we plan on so so do you have which parts are still missing for you? Well, it doesn't matter because uh, the, 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 um, the extruder we haven't got that yet, and the hot hot bed. Hot bed. We haven't got that yet. And you said you have the you have the rods. No, I've got two two different rods. Let me just bring one. one yeah. Page. Yeah. So Jose, this is built in Germany, the big frame and. He actually prototyped the old yeah, frame. We were in, um, Hamburg, you saw the other one? This is the one I yeah. did the other time. Yep. Yeah, and this is like, I think this is 40 centimeters. Yep. And um, this is the longer one that we have, longer rods. Okay. But it's, no, it's 50 centimeters, so we need to get something longer. Okay. But you can do, let's see, if you span that, will it reach across? To the metal pieces because as long as it reaches to the metal pieces show me show me how it matches to the frame show me how it actually goes up to the frame what do you mean? yeah like put it in a spot compared to the hole no like lengthwise show me compare it lengthwise yeah just put it flat on a, on a frame here? no just put it put the rod flat on the frame okay like that oh yeah so Okay. Yeah, yeah, that should be shouldn't be a problem as long as you're spanning the hole in the middle, you can make an attachment. So so that How rod Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. No problem for attaching. So I mean, if if you want to build it out with these rods, um that would be good. Do you have the belts? No, I've got, I've got the belts. I've got everything, almost everything. Okay. So so that will be really good. Let's plan on um, having you prototype that in Germany. So let's coordinate. We'll co maybe I can shoot you an email this this week and tell you more about like some dis directions and how to do that. Because it requ the way we did it is um, there's an alignment procedure for how you can glue it together with epoxy very easily, and it doesn't take a lot of time at all. It's very quick. So. I can feed you some of those instructions and then you can do that. And then hopefully you can send us a video. Can you set up, when you do that, can you do a time lapse? Yeah, I can. That's okay. what I plan to do, yeah. 
Excellent, excellent. So you can commit to Friday, Saturday working on this? Yeah. Excellent. Because it's been long for, it's been lingering for a long time, and it's getting okay. boring and annoying. So, okay. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So we'll coordinate on exactly what to do for Friday, Saturday, and then what we'll do is uh, have you do that. And in the meantime, talking about time lapses, so the update on this side here, let me just show you. Uh, share my screen for a video because the the thing here is working fully in full effect so let me share my screen and show you the video of what we've got right now so this is a two minute video uh, and it shows everything about the build so far so So I stripped the old 3D printer for parts to basically upgraded the Folgertech Prusa i3 to this new version, installed the frame, tested the first frame, installed all the frames, got the motion going. The belt tensioning works very well. And I ended up here what you see is a, the bed is simply this kind of mounting on the rods from the, once again, the 3D printed pieces. So it's all the same uniform pieces on all the axes. There's the bed with the PEI surface, which is a high performance surface. Now what I found out after starting this was that the geometry was not the greatest in terms of see how far the uh, the cantilevered surface away from the motion there. So I, I put it closer and when I put it closer, I ended up moving the Z frame to the outside so I get better reach because that's just how it worked better. So you'll see me pretty much take it all apart again here reverse the direction of the the extruder now the extruder is paint, pointing somewhat backwards and then I put the see the frame is outside here so that's the current thing I printed some things the auto bed leveling works perfectly uh, that's really good um, I had a burn I burned out a motor because I didn't set the the current right on the on the controller so I replaced the motor but as you see here everything is like you do that you know, in five minutes you can replace a motor you can replace any parts and things like that so so that's that very positive results the nice thing is um, so the let me share my uh, share myself yeah no it works works great the the bed leveling man talking about a lot of wasted time it took me three days to figure everything out on the uh, the whole bed leveling procedure so way more time and it's one of those things that this it's poorly documented the videos like some of the leading videos were incorrect I mean it was just really frustrating process a process that should have took took me about two hours took about 30 hours so real I mean talking about I mean if you see that you can see that as a huge waste but also an opportunity why you know if you're trying to develop a printer from scratch it's like impossible it just takes a lot of time but now if we document this and make this uh, really accessible to everyone yeah then it's it's really good um, so okay so back to the meeting let's let's talk a little bit about where we are right now so let's get a get an update from everybody I'm gonna share this document here so I'm, I'm uh, thinking about what are the next steps so one piece of big news so the idea is there that so Chile in Germany and the, the German guys I mean they can't do the material sourcing support in Germany uh, because two of the their main guys are not gonna be there on April 22nd and we can't postpone this because we want to run this monthly from now on so it's, at this point, it makes most sense to actually move the workshop on April 22nd to the United States. So that's that's the way I'm planning right now, simply because um, what I was planning on doing, because they weren't there, I was going to just take luggage and take all the parts, but that could be really troublesome at the border. It really needs the support from the team locally. So it's going to be much easier to do it here. So right now we're planning April 22nd in the Kansas City area in fact at factory farm which will be nice because we've got the nice workshop big workshop space uh, we can do any cutting and things I mean all the parts are here we'll have the demo machine in fact a couple more than one demo machine probably uh, by the time of the workshop 
I actually want to have four different versions. So as you know, the, the frame is a cutout of three, three different sizes. So the, what we did with the 16 inch frame, the interior of that is a 12 inch frame and the interior of that is an eight inch frame. And I looked at some of those dimensions and you can actually make a, make a 3D printer out of each of those. So if you go with the eight by eight inch frame, you can actually get like a four, at least a, a probably a five by five inch uh, printing surface possibly six by six but basically you do what what I did which is mount the axes on the outside instead of on the inside so you have more space and we can actually shrink down the end printed pieces just a tiny bit and have it have it uh, work well so what I found out is on a z-axis it's it's good I mean all the axes are identical in terms of motion for the z-axis it's no problem to be strong enough to actually lift the entire bed I mean it's it's a few pounds like maybe one or two pounds for the whole structure but the Z motor has no problem moving that and um, you can see how once you start the print you have to do the leveling command auto bed level command and then it just prints it you can see how the Z like as it moves across the bed you see the Z moving up very very slightly so we know it works and just to show you the evidence here here's my 3d printed cube <laughs> here's that little little thing but um, I, that's all I got so far as far as printing. Um, so let's talk about the next step. So if we have a month of lead time, one thing we can really focus around would be, let me share this document uh, of what the next steps are. So take a look at this. I, I'm pasting that into the, the chat box. So first of all, let me know all you guys where we're at. So we know Chile in, in Germany, he's got the prototyping going on. Jose, tell me and Emmanuel, where, where are you at? As far as on your side, how far you got? Unmute yourself. So Jose, for example, I see you, you did the instructional. You're working on an instructional. How far did you get on that? I didn't get the chance to see your log. Um, let's see, where's... Um, you're doing the fill us in on where you're at. Yeah, you gotta you gotta unmute yourself though. Uh, yep. Okay. Let's see that. Okay, so. so. Can share it also. Yeah, yeah. Can you sh uh, make that editable? Wow, that's that's looking pretty good. Um, oh, nice. Wow. Let me share my screen on that for. Well, you guys just uh, click on that link because I'm recording this here, so I can see that clearly. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that looks pretty good. Let me let me talk through that. So yeah, you've got the overview slide right here on the first page, tech, talking about the, some of the main features. I like the the nice uh, grayed out. Can you, can you share the the, the, the screen? The, yeah. yeah, yeah so the, the, yeah. Yep. So this is, um, yeah, right here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Tell me how you did, uh, so this is just, how'd you get the background and everything in that picture to be identical? You, you did a color settings, certain color yeah. settings within FreeCAD? No, no, I did it all in, uh, with uh, filtering good light. So you can put plate because I'm editing correctly also. You know? I'm not sure how you did that exactly, but what we need you to do, because this is actually a very nice color scheme and nice color standard here, we should have you, if you don't mind, please put the source file or the process of how you got all those colors on your log because yeah, that's 
Yeah, it's very attractive. That looks that looks really good. It looks quite professional. So we've got we've got an overview slide. Let me just go through this a bit. Yep. Uh, different views, frame, outer view facing the frame. Very good. Things like pay attention to the orientation of the connection, motor support, magnet holes, carriage, belt, ball bearings. Yeah, belt connection to the motor. Yep. Read this. Oh yeah, there you go. And then I also you have also the steps below where I actually started writing the steps. Uh, and then I need to put it there. Okay. Go down uh, to the gray one. To the, yeah, past this one as well. And then there I start. Yeah. 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 So that, that's yeah. This is this that is, is very nice. Mhm. Mm that's a good template. So we should probably have people use that as the general template because there's some good, good design elements in here. Mhm. Mm Sorry, you got what else done? What what else? Well, I spent a lot of time uh, putting together a proof I3 clone. Okay, so the one you 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 bought. Okay. Yeah, so that helped me a lot with the instruction of the well. And uh, Yeah. Yeah, it took some time also, yeah. Right. Yeah, so I mean, what would be really useful I mean, that's pretty good and we can replicate the same thing across the other frames so yeah very nice yeah uh, Emmanuel how about yourself um, where are you at I I fixed some stuff on the on the CAD file I fixed the width of the belt uh, uh, you know, some things were out of order. Uh, I fixed the, the size of the motor interface. Mm -hmm. it, you said, it, yeah, it was M6, it was a mistake on the file. Anyway. Yeah, so little little changes. I, the FIDB, the, the CAD should be, uh, I think it's perfect now. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so I, for example, so now we do have available the file of the individual axis like for example if we go to d3d log and we look at no the d3d integration i believe is the page what's the page on the d it's called d3d integration Where's our integration file? Modules, hardware. I want to make sure. So the critical thing that we want to have, okay, D3D integration page. If we download, so for example, if we download one of the files, like for example, the, um, so if I click on D3D right at Y axis, that would have the bolts in there, correct? Yes, but I haven't touched these files for a while now. Okay, um, so can you paste the link? The assembly, I, I, I couldn't find how to make sub-assemblies of the axis and then put them on the complete file. So the overall assembly file on the top corner uh, is has each one piece on its place. Okay, does that... It's not made, it's not made of sub-assemblies, just piece by piece. Does it have, does it have bolts? 
So I'm, I'm looking for which of the files has the actual bolts. I, um, no, the, the overall assembly has no bolts. Okay. I can put them. Okay, because probably so after you, can, yeah, so, can yeah, so, so that's why we want to do, okay, so the critical thing here, that's going to get really heavy because there's, well, it'll be, yeah. point is, if you're doing the instructionals, like, for example, Jose on the axis, you need to show the specific bolt order. So any of these files have bolts with them or no? The axis, the, yeah, the axis have bolts. Okay, so let me, let me for example, I wanna go, I'm gonna just download that just to show everybody. I'm just downloading the, for example, the Y axis and I, I'm seeing it's like six megabytes. So yeah, it looks like it's pretty heavy and it has the bolts. But the critical feature is we want to make sure that we're not missing that in one of the files. The overall file should have no bolts because then it will get too heavy. But the individual modules definitely should have the bolts for the detailed instructional purposes. So let's I'm going to just open that up right now just to make sure the bolts are in there. Because we want to now get together on what are the missing steps for overall documentation. So if you look at, um, so this is the document. Let me paste this back into the... The chat box so in this document please go in there and we can coordinate on what are the so let's just examine this FreeCAD file uh, let it load up so here Jose um, we should use Jose's thing as the overall template and we should have uh, people copy that for their instructional because I, I don't see the other parts having been been done by uh, I don't I'm not sure what what Cedric is up to right now okay so if you go to this document right here let's see is this loading up here um, let's wait for the I'll just wait for the free cat to load up in the meantime but let's look at um, the D3D documentation slide. Okay, all you guys get in there. Uh, I see two people in there. Everyone get in there. So now let's look at what are the outstanding steps. So complete in individual axes. Is that the case? So let me look at the, the individual file. But that that has to be the case. If that is not done, we all have to gather around doing that for the workshop. Um, Jonathan, if you, if I don't know if you heard, but April twenty second is Factory Farm, Missouri, because there's logistic not logistics but sourcing issues in the German side. They weren't going to be able to support that fully at this point. Um, so FreeCAD. So this is what's happening to my FreeCAD. It's still blacked out. So, but it should. I think it should should load it up. In the meantime, let's continue on the document. So point two, uh, we need to now generate the new file. So we should save the original one as is. So Emmanuel, you've got, do you have the one with the outside axis? Or do you have it still in the same orientation? No, no, I, fi I fixed the orientation of the extruder. Okay, the, uh, excellent. And the whole hit file history, you put that... Okay, so so what's important as we do that, so if you go to the overall assembly file, that should be clear. Yep, so this is good. Yeah, uh, Extruder now faces yeah, back I, and Z-axis. Yep. I put a comment. What, how, yep. what has... Then this has its file. Exactly, so that's great. So we can go, basically go through this file history to see what we started with and you can kind of trace the evolution of this. But yeah, that's the correct way to upload new files into this place. Um, but I, what I think we should do though, so the next part, let me see if the free cat loaded. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, it took a little bit to load, but that's because I'm actually processing some videos right now. Uh, I like the perspective view, so it looks kind of like... It's actually pointing at you. That's really good. Uh, so it looks like the bolts are in here. Um, that looks pretty good. So these are the individual files that we want to be work w working with for the instructional, as far as that goes. We see that, for example, in this file, 
if you look at the middle carriage, so these would be the Ys, and this is where the X attaches to these bolts, so that's correct. Uh, we can also do uh, a version of this, uh, like for example, if we if we go to making heavier Z axes, this is just the Y, but if we do a heavier Z axis that has to lift a heavier bed, we can very easily add this motor to the other side, so we have a double drive axis which is really nice. Uh, the system that, as we have, allows us to do that. You just use two motor parts instead of this idler part, and you're driving the belt from two, uh, two sides, which is excellent. So our system lends itself to doing that kind of work. Okay, excellent. So, so we know the files are correct. We can put a good checkpoint here. So this is okay. So that's... Small change, um, you know, changes uh -huh. compared to the overall assembly file. Okay. I don't, I don't know if you, that's important. So oh, the well. length of the Z axis may be different, you know. Uh -huh. Small change. If you want, I can make them identical. I can start from the mm -hmm. uh, of the overall assembly file and delete everything else except for you know, axis that I'm working to. Yeah. Yep, yep, that's correct. That's right. That's one way to do the... Yeah, that's actually a good way to do the workflow because if you erase everything and you keep one part, then when you put them in together from this from the part files, they're actually arranged in the correct position. So you don't have to actually assemble them. So that's a good workflow. Okay, now to the next big step. So that is all good and we can worry about the super final... Uh, reconfigurations like little minor details once uh, by the end of the so so actually my new schedule here is I was gonna publish the announcement for the workshop today I'm a little behind schedule in the sense that it took me way longer to do the to get the calibration working which is working perfectly now but I'm right now publishing my new goal is to publish like Thursday night uh, I do want to spend a day or two doing some videos and at that point we have four weeks full four weeks to have people sign up for the workshop so that's the idea thursday and by that time jean baptiste should have the infographic all up and i should have some more videos so that would be really good and tonight we're meeting with the hr team and we're gonna we're actively recruiting for some other people like like blender cura and other details on making this go further uh, for the actual build workshop because one one big thing of support we really need is if you want to make our custom install a version of Cura which is the, the open source 3d printing software uh, we want to configure it exactly for our machine and optimize it for our machine so there's going to be some programming and some little interface changes and changes on the on the configurations and all that uh, so we need some programmers for that part uh, so now let's talk about the the next major step working on the 16 inch 12 inch and 8 inch frames so in actual workshop what I will offer is three different versions you can make um, 8 inch 12 inch or 16 frame so the 8 inch essentially it, it allows you 6 inch of a working bed the 12 inch allows you like an 8 inch working bed and the 16 inch allows you actually the 16 inch if you put the axes outside that allows you up to a 12 inch working bed so that would be uh, actually a pretty considerable size. But what we want to do right now is draw up these new versions because we are going to put them together for the build them. And we'll, we'll price it accordingly. Like for this tiny frame when you get a 6 by 6 inch machine, it'll cost you a little more. Um, sorry, a little less. Uh, so there's an incentive. Like you, you can pay a little more to get the bigger machine, but pay a little less for the... Uh, smaller machine so that people end up signing up for the different ones so because we don't want to waste all that cut metal from the inside cutouts it will be a shame to waste it because you can actually make much smaller machines that still work that have all the good features including auto bed leveling but they're like your 8 inch frame version is going to be the <clears throat> basically the, the little ba <clears throat> baby 3d printer so we want to get to designing these so um, and then the next overview point is 
the selling point for our value main value proposition here is that we are creating a real construction set so first of all we've got the 12 inch 8 inch and 16 inch versions and actually Sheila and I we both have the 24 inch frames which I'm gonna try to print out enough pieces so I can actually assemble them and put them into the videos working as well so that we have good promo material um, the 24 inch yeah so so also we want to do in order for what are the requirements for a construction set approach we have to teach people how to take our FreeCAD files which are if you if you put together a very simple video you can show people how to modify the underlying sketches so you can modify everything like from the frame size to the carriage pieces whole axes and stops print bed variations and so forth so <clears throat> that is something that all of us can do uh, we'd have to take out Caden live and do some screen casting and do instructionals and okay here's how you like for example Emmanuel when you did the the end stop holders um, there's a whole procedure of how you actually generate the the geometry and and there's logical and less logical procedures so we want to document the simplest way that someone can take our files with just like you know like an hour or a few hours of training on FreeCAD they can actually modify the parts and assemble them themselves so that would be a task to do um, because we want to do a, I'd like to do a construction set ebook so basically we we make this uh, publication uh, because the goals are quite ambitious I mean I want this to be like the most universally adaptable most popular 3d printer construction set that there is right now the Prusa i3 is the clear dominator across the world like like about a hundred thousand Prusa i3s have been built to date but uh, I mean there's definitely limitations to the Prusa design and this actually incorporates our design uh, has a number of features why don't I actually go through them because it's important for people to appreciate that and this is good for also for Jean Baptiste to to look at because that's the features we're going to emphasize in the infographic so let me just go through them there's 12 main points that we have as far how this is uh, unique or different um, so here we have um, let's see let's look at my email because I my sent mail to Jean Baptiste where I describe the 12 different unique features uh, where is okay here's the infograph okay so this first of all we are using a steel frame uh, I actually don't know anybody else who uses a steel frame or at least with the uh, for us specifically it's it's allowing for magnetic attachment of components without using bolts so what you're seeing in a current model right now there are no bolts the the one I'm talking about right now no bolts that's actually amazing and beautiful it works incredibly well now there's there is a little cheat I'm doing one so that there is like you can bump it by mistake what I'm doing is taking one magnet and and actually gluing that with crazy glue underneath the carriages so say you push it you can't push because there's a glued magnet that prevents the the carriage from moving but otherwise it's it's put together by magnet so you can actually slide the frame out and reconfigure uh-huh but that's it, it works great the super magnets are about eight pounds each so it's a very strong connection and we have the the end stops mounted by uh, magnets also the uh, tool holder which now holds the 3d print uh, the, the extruder that's mounted by magnets as well works great I mean you can take it right on and off so you can do things like um, with a solid frame the steel frame it will get you readily a capacity to do uh, circuit milling now that's one of the weaknesses of current uh, designs nobody can do circuit milling because their frame does not allow that it's like the the kind of frame that the Prusa design has that's not really great for it doesn't have the the torque capacity like for us with uh, uh, my frame right here is 0.13 inch I mean you can literally drive a car over that and that thing won't flatten it's in a cubic structure like that that thing can with like if you put a weight on it it could probably withhold a couple of thousand pounds so extremely strong 
So point two, the universal axis is used so the drive system is identical for all the axes. Absolutely. That is the unique feature. It works. It works great. The Z-axis has no problem. I was concerned maybe like if you don't have the screw on a Z-axis, you might not be able to lift the platform. But no, no problem with the 72-ounce, inch-ounce motors. They have no problem lifting the axis. Three, the axes can be attached or stacked together for more power. Or you can actually put the two motors on one carriage for more power or can be configured in any way that's required so you can basically play plug and play frame can be scaled to any size to make larger machines you can use thicker steel too it's made it's cut out from flat steel but it's glued into a structure that's three-dimensional point five universal axis 3d printed pieces and rods can be enlarged to make even heavy-duty CNC machines so yeah you can go up to big 3d printed pieces big rods like think two inch rods that's extreme heavy duty super precision like engine making machines point six magnetically attached tool head allows quick interchange of working tools so for example for a laser or a router uh, seven heated bed with PEI surface allows for excellent adhesion and the removal of 3d printed parts the way it works is when it's hot the parts attach but when you cool it down the parts pretty much come right off what that means is that you can do automated harvesting you can have at the end of the the print you can have the head actually bump all the pieces off the platform so you can get automated part harvesting like say you want to do a an unattended print of like 2000 net pots for the aquaponics well you just let it go it prints one bed full it it uh, automatically harvests from the bed by by bumping the parts off and then you go to the next round without any human attention. That is actually a very nice feature. Uh, part eight, automatic bed leveling allows turnkey operation where you just upload the 3D printing file and print. So currently in Pronterface, um, I was using Pronterface, you have to put in the G29, which is the auto bed leveling command before the print and it does that and then you just hit print and you've got a perfect calibration. Um, okay, number 10 or number nine, I can't count here. Fully open source CAD files in FreeCAD allow users to modify the machine to any size and shape, providing a basic 3D printer construction set. So that's an important one. Uh, and that's, that's why I mentioned we need to generate those instructionals. And this is a call out for documenters. So with our HR team, we're going to get heavy on, on recruiting for documenters, basically people who can talk to the people on our team here and so we don't have to do those instructions they can talk to us and using Caden Live and FreeCAD themselves they can pretty much take tag team and work as a complete team where we're doing some of the technical work they're doing the documentation and we all are kind of cross trained in all these different functions but the open source nature of the system allows us to do that okay number 11 uh, minimal parts count has approximately three times less unique parts compared to any other 3D printer. So here, what we actually need to do is we need to do a part count. I'm actually gonna put that, um, let's get a part count for this. Uh, that's important, because that's a good selling point, because literally the number of parts, or the number of unique parts, is gonna determine how much time it's gonna, it's gonna take you to build it. So that means reducing the barriers to entry significantly. Now, for one, the part count probably is lower. Like, for example, there's the frame consists of a total of six pieces. Uh, but also, if you talk about unique parts count, while it's six pieces, it's only one unique part count. All the frame pieces are identical. So that's carried throughout the machine. So there's an incredible savings of complexity throughout the whole design. Okay, point number 12, simplicity and low parts count allows for the extreme build events lasting a single day. So those are some of the features of basically the full scalability. So one of the things that emerge here are, um, let's go back to the document. One, for now we can make the different versions and that's the immediate steps. Uh, for the construction set ebook, but also I can uh, duplicate this slide and then um, let's call that part two of that. But the things we can do right now, once we are able to 
well right now we're essentially get um, able to do a lot of different variations like let's start talking about the 3d printed glazing and fence posts so that means a printer that could be like the current version or even the 8 by 8 inch the tiny version but it's very tall so for a fence post you would have an 8 inch printer that's six feet tall so next issues so next issues would be uh, fence post like a vertical printer and this we're serious we want to do this so that we can actually print our glazing and fence posts for next for this year's October seed home build so fence posts and then uh, polycarbonate glazing Uh, we won't get there without doing the Lyman extruder. I, I'd like to do the next step would be the Lyman extruder. We don't have enough part, people on a team. We got to get this documentation. But if we recruit more people, we want to do the Lyman extruder plus the uh, precious plastic grinder, so that we're recycling plastic. Uh, that allows us to do things. And here, like if you talk about fence posts, you can also be talking about plastic lumber. Uh, what does that mean? That means you need a volcano nozzle. You need a large nozzle. Uh, 1.2 millimeter or like or like 1.4 millimeter. The largest there is. Whatever the volcano nozzle, the E3D volcano does that. So th those are some of the next steps. But we, could, we don't have to worry about that right now. For now we want to do, I think the next step would be, we absolutely have to do the, the, the 12 and 8 inch versions. So that we have to do. Uh, so I'm gonna put that in red. Uh, then I mentioned the instructional videos. F uh, let's talk about shortening of the 3D pieces for the 8 inch frame. That's another thing we can do. But basically, right now the way the 3D printed pieces are, the, the end pieces can be slightly smaller. You can actually take out, um, like you can get rid of about one third of it all you have to do for the motor piece make sure that the motor can still be mounted but the motor can actually be hanging off a little bit um, uh, but we gotta make sure we gotta put the end stop on there as well as well as the idler piece they can that can be shortened probably by one third so that's a that's an important task because because that will allow us for the very tiny printer to get more surf more print area and that will become apparent once you try to put together the 8 inch printer you'll have to put the axes outside the frame, not inside the frame. Inside the frame, there's just not enough room. Okay, uh, dual motor drive version. So that's that's what I'm showing here. We want to do that as well for the Z-axis, for the tall printers. We definitely could use that. Um, that'll be very important here. So put, instead of one motor, do two motors. So that would be 3D CAD. Uh, we want to design that. And then code code instructional so right now the code is uploaded to the wiki under d3d controller you can download the code and you can also download the original mar the blank marlin you can go to the uh, marlin fw.org marlin firmware.org i think that is but you can download the the code original code and then compare it line by line there's a configuration file in there and what we want to do is to make it easy for people go through every single line of the of the configuration file. Um, this is the thing that I wasted many many hours upon. But if we make an instructional, the instructional should be like five minutes or ten minutes, that walks the user through all the different configuration changes you have to make to make it work with our configuration. And you can do the code the actually the Marlin code is well annotated but there's a lot of things that you can't tell but there is a lot of annotations so so we can do um, a basic instructional of taking the existing code from our wiki which is our working code and compare it to the raw download which has no settings it's just got all default settings and looking at the differences between the two um, a documenter a person who does not understand the code can make an instructional on what the correct settings are and then of course there's hundreds of videos online like when i mean there's many many videos uh, online about how to do all the settings 
and approximately 99.9% .9 of them are incorrect. <laughs> that's, that's the only problem. That's the big frustration because the code gets changed, you know, after six months, it's like if the video is six months or older, it's probably inaccurate. And I've gone through a lot of that. As I said, 30 hours it took me to get the uh, leveling working. But that's from a completely fresh design, including reconfiguring the second. Uh, like I reconfigured motors too because we've got two Y axes and things like that. But but yeah, there's a bunch of. I mean, it's it actually is somewhat complex. Uh, because there's so many moving parts, but it's not like uh, if you have a good instructional, you can do the configuration in about half an hour. But the point is, without that, you can't. Um, so a code instructional, doing a little web and web video, a screencast of of all the different settings within configuration H. Configuration H is the um, that's the file in Marlin. Uh, within the, you you access that through the environment let me just show you what that looks like so if I go so I downloaded Marlin I made all the configuration changes so if I click on double click on Marlin here um, okay my computer is slow here but on Marlin here you go into the Marlin folder and then you go to marlin.ino, that's the file you need to click within this whole folder of code. That's the That starts the Arduino environment. So marlin.ino you have to click and you're going to get taken to the Mar Arduino environment. Uh, so this is, once again, I had to download a new version of the Arduino environment. And I'm using 1.6.8. The most recent one would not compile on my computer. And the old Folgertech Prusa code we used from last year, uh, I think it's actually bugged. So I don't think the the bed leveling will work on that at all with the way it is. Because I think it's just old code. Uh, so you have to download the new Arduino, uh, which is version, I would suggest version 1.6.8 as the official OSE version for now, for this quarter. Uh, I found that 1.8 did not work on my Ubuntu. And uh, the Marlin you can download from the wiki. So here's uh, so there's a bunch of files within Marlin. You go to the one the tab that says configuration H, and it's basically it's a bunch of lines of code here, but it has kind of like all these different settings like define this, define you know steps per revolution and whatever the motors, the direction of the axes, movement and so forth for the specific configuration. But that's how it looks. So that's Marlin with uh, this is shown within Arduino environment. So what you do is you you compile it by pressing the check sign and then you click this arrow here to upload to the 3D printer. So if you click this arrow it will upload it, compile it and upload it. And now because I'm disconnected it's going to quit at the uploading step here. Uh, so it's going to give me an error so I'm going to just quit here. But that's that's all you need to do. You, you need to see I get errors here because I'm not connected to the printer right now. Uh, but that's that, so let's quit out of that. Uh, but we need to document that, so that's, I mean, if we had some people, some more people, we could do that, that's an outstanding step. So for now, we want to divvy up the parts here. Uh, there's the, the main tasks are the 12 and 8 inch versions. Um, we want to... I think an important part is shortening the 3D p printed piece. That's a priority, so I'm going to put that in red. Um, the dual drive motor version, that's not a priority because it's not needed for the first version, but we will need it for the fence post and glazing printer. Um, code instructional is actually critical because without that, like what I want to do for this workshop, and I want, I want to have the people download the code and download Arduino environment and make sure that they can have all the code and we're also gonna do the the live USB for that which Jay and others are working on right now so that's coming along but the code instructional uh, it would be good to have as much of that but probably for now with the existing team that we have we've we've got uh, significant tasks here at least three 
So let's look at the division of labor here for this this week. Uh, if we go to the D3D page, let's go to the Scrummy. Uh, so who wants to do what? I, I shut up here, and then let's let's get some feedback on what people want to take on. The instructionals are alive, uh, definitely um, a live thing to do. But before the instructionals, I think we uh, so we've got a nice template from Jose. And that's coming along really well. What we want to do, I think the, the main missing thing is actually the bolting order. Uh, I didn't see, there's some, some info on that, but, but the very detailed, here's screw one, two, three, four, in very specific order, because we want to have that written and printed for the workshop. And then the last step, which we don't want to talk about yet, we'll, we'll get to it a little later uh, after this week, but the very detailed build instructionals the looping 15 to 30 second video instructionals that's going to be for later but not for now uh, okay people so pipe back in uh, let me know what you'd like to do so we can use the um, if we go to the d3d log I believe we've got the scrummy over there the scrum task board as far as for what the what we need to do yeah so from last week um, let's have this load up all right people you want to pipe back in and tell me what you're doing so we know that um, for Chile in Germany he's doing the fr Friday Saturday we're gonna coordinate for his build of the frame uh, where he's gonna need some some epoxy so that's the only thing you need to get if you don't have that Jonathan uh, anything to pipe in on what you're what you're up to uh, can you do the build this weekend? Um, I have. Some, I may have some. What time are you doing it? Well, I mean, it's uh, Sheila is going to be so. So my my printer is complete with with bed leveling all done. What I'm doing this week is cleaning up the electronic wiring. Uh, but Sheila is going to okay. work on it in Germany sa uh, Friday Saturday. But he's kind of different time zone. Um, but you guys might want to coordinate on that in terms of being on a hangout at the same time so you can kind of share notes or something. Uh, for me, this Friday, Saturday, I was actually going to work on, on some of the utilities on the seed home, so I might not be not be around Friday, Saturday. But fr Friday, I've got the webinar, and then um, I was going to work on some other things. Uh, is there a way you guys can coordinate? or? Because he's actually going to build out, Jonathan, uh, yeah. she actually printed out the big 24-inch frame, so he's working with that. That's fine. Uh, he, he, uh, he had that cut by the, by the people at, in Germany there. So that's workable, but that's, that's going to be a huge prototype. Mm -hmm. the tool, what size are you working with, a 16-inch? I'm working with a 16-inch, and now, of course, I've got the 12-inch and 8-inch, so I'm going to start putting those together because uh, those could make 6-inch... Like the the eight inch frame, I believe you can get a six by six inch print surface on that, um, but we have to shrink up the axes just a little bit. Yeah, so but I'm working on sixteen by sixteen. Has he printed out the parts? For, are the parts the same? Yeah, yeah. In parts. terms of the three D parts. Right. So so the parts with the with the magnet holes. That's what um, that's what's required. Uh, did you guys get the magnets or? Yeah, I've, um, I've got most of my, my stuff. I'm still waiting on a turnaround from the CNC people. There are apparently a lot of industrial types around here, so it's a little uh, difficult getting 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 through to some people just because they have other things that make more money. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So. Turn around this week. So. We'll yeah. See what happens. Yeah. See see what happens, but she is definitely. Doing is he is he getting a, a different. Is he getting a bigger print bed, or, or is he just going to stick with well, a small print bed? Just that's, the that's the thing. Like, um, to do a bigger print bed, I'm not sure how, how well the ramps could support a bigger print bed. I'm not sure how to do that. We know that it works on an 8-inch print bed, which I have. So maybe just for the prototype version, he might want to do the 8-inch, and then he can do very tall, but he wouldn't... So he, he he only got one frame. I mean, if he cut out all three three frames, he should have three frames. Said, "I'm just going to take the 24-inch frame, and that's it." He was um, 
Well, I think that's the old version. I think we, we didn't do the nested part at that point. So he's just got that plus the big cutouts from the inside. Which could be used, but they're all... They don't have... It's just the big cutouts from the center for him. So he's going to use the big... Oh, big so cutout. he selected the old, the old files. The old yeah. DSF files? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which is fine, because it okay. still gets you the, the proper thing. And that will be a good test to see how well that works, actually. And document that I guess process. the only concern there is, is calibration, because I know that's going to be a little bit harder for him. Not at all. I, mean, the, yeah, I don't know how difficult it will be, but we'll see. No, 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 not at all. The The drive system is identical. It's just the 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 size of the... The only calibration issue you have to correct is the Z height. Because if he's going to use the 8x8 inch bed then all the settings, I mean, the drive settings, absolutely everything is identical. He's just got a bigger frame and, and bigger axes. Um, the automated bed leveling is the, is the secret sauce here. There's a procedure for the, um, the bed level, which I've got that down. And um, all the settings are going to be the same. So it's, it's not an issue. The one setting he has to change is the Z height of the bed because if he used the code as is right now, it would only allow you to go like six inches up or eight inches up, which is what I have it set for right now. He wants to use like the full 18 inches or two feet or so. Yep. So that's, that's well, actually. I mean, uh -huh. yeah, well, I guess what I'm saying is that he, he probably hasn't had any experience with I'm going to need some assistance. Degree, yeah, I want, we'll figure that out. Um, yeah, well, what I want to do is I want to get him up to speed. I want to communicate with him. I want to send him an email with with all that we know, because what we know right now, um, it's pretty much documented. So I can give him any of the further insights, uh, so that he's ready to build. Yeah. Uh, he's built the axes before, so he knows how to do the axes, and uh, so he's. I mean, he's pretty decent on as far as where he's at. I think the only thing he hasn't had the experience with is the controller, but I've got the full wiring and instructionals on that. Uh, it turns out one of the features was some of the wires were reversed on the extruder motor because the, the extruder that we got, it's the wiring is actually different, so you had to reverse a set of wires. But beyond that, that was like the main thing that wasn't turnkey, outside, of course, of working out the whole code, which we've got that down completely. So, So that's pretty good. Um, yeah, but definitely, definitely want to coordinate. So, so both of you guys and Sheila, like, make sure we communicate by the time you build that you're in a good position to, to do the build. Yeah. Uh, okay. So but I guess we've got Jose, Emmanuel, and then as far as Cedric, who's missing Cedric, and then possibly Brian. Well, but for you guys, if Jose and and uh, Emmanuel, how would you like to break up the tasks? Because, I mean, we've got the 8-inch and 12-inch frame and the shortening of the, the carriage pieces at this point uh, as, the, as the main priorities. And I think next week what we want to return to, I want to go back to the, since the extruder that we have right now works, we want to upgrade to the E3D, which allows us to do the uh, volcano nozzle. Because once we have... Like, for example, for the 24-inch version of the printer, you definitely want to use the Volcano nozzle for the larger prints because it was going to take forever. And even on a 16-inch version, I definitely want to get super fast prints on that, and that you can get with a large nozzle. So that will be for next week, but not. let's let's hold off on to that. And for that, we want to use the Prusa i3, um, the MK2 original Prusa i3, the file that we looked at before. And actually, it turns out I think all the files are there, uh, the 3D printing files, actually, in fact, I 3D printed it already, but some of the little missing links are the rest of the bill of materials on that, where you source the fans and, and all the rest of that that extruder system. Now, that extruder we're going to have to modify because the way they have it, they have it for their carriage, and that's completely different. Ours is a complete different mounting system, so the actual 3D print file would have to be modified, so that is not trivial. You'd have to actually get the measurements of that print file, we have to reverse engineer it and make it work with our system. So, uh, but anyway, Jose and, and Emmanuel, what, what can you guys do? What uh, can you guys get on the 12-inch and 8-inch versions? But st we have to start with a shrink, shrunk down 
um, we want to shrink down the the axis pieces just a little bit so we have a I, yeah I I really don't care I can't do anything uh, I think I, I learned how to use the assembly workbench really good now okay that's good so, yeah we need a documenter to, <laughs> to document what you know at this point really because you you actually your skill set on FreeCAD has exceeded anyone on the team so far so we need to document that actually but I would suggest why don't you take on the the shrinking up of the two ca two end carriage pieces uh, so that we can make them work with the eight inch version yeah why don't you work on that and why don't we have Jose Jose you think you can work on the uh, the assembly for the 12 inch printer for the sorry yeah for the 12 inch version so that means you're gonna shrink down the, the axes a little bit but also yeah, for the 12 inch version, here's the two things. Keep the Z axis outside, but I would also put the Y axis on the outside because in 12 inches, you're starting to eat up a lot of space. Like right now with the axis inside, I can hardly get eight inches of print surface the way the geometry works. So what you're gonna have to do is put the Y axis on the outside of the frame instead of the inside of the frame, which means that you're gonna have to mount the the x-axis a little bit differently but there's ways to do that so can you work on that so you mean z axis uh, and x axis out and j axis outside right oh uh, yeah the the z axis outside and the the yeah. two different y axes on the, y, yeah. on the outside yep yeah, the y -axis. okay yeah let's do that i think that's uh, i also that means you have to drop the new frame and all that. So, I mean, there's a bunch of work there. You basically have to start. Uh, we should start. That's like a complete, um, you know, different branch. But I think it does make a lot of sense in the, what we're doing because, I mean, you're literally shrinking the cost of the frame by threefold. So that means instead of cutting out one one frame from the metal, you're, you're cutting out three. And that I think is a good idea. So we should definitely make it work because that means we can get these printers out produced with a very low cost frame. Like if we use those three um, three frames, the materials cost 50 bucks. So it's about $17 per frame from the, you know, so, so yeah, that really, really, really makes sense. So the thing is that I'm finishing the, the instructional. Yeah. And uh, the bill of what Bill of materials uh, as well. Yeah, so, so let's so let's get very specific. So on the so let's on the bill of materials. Yeah, I'm going back to the to the D3D bill of materials. So on the bill of materials, I'm gonna add a story there. So B O M uh, parts count or parts count plus unique parts count. I think we're in a good position to count it up I right started, now. I started already counting the fasteners uh, on the nuts. Okay. On the bolts, sorry. Yep. That's so excellent. You already have some of that. Excellent. Uh, so I put you yeah. on the... This would be actually March 20. So I'm going to add a story that says March 20. So I'm on the, if you see my screen, I'm on the Scrummy on the D3D meeting log, D3D log. So yeah. March 20, let's get, um, I'm going to drag that up to the top. So I'm going to put, uh, actually, um, so I'm going to drag the parts count item. That's in progress. Okay, so we put that into progress. Um, uh, yeah, we. The same. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's, I think it's the same. You see, bill of materials. So, yeah. If you want yeah. More yeah. Of, we get. Uh, right. So, we should probably put that, put both of them in progress. Let's make them as very explicit items because there are. If you have yeah, the bill of materials, yeah. you don't necessarily have the parts count. So. You have to do it because that's, I think that's a, you know, one time I actually posted on, 
on the RepRap forums saying, hey, what do you guys think of this universal axis minimal parts count? And, um, and I told them I'll get back to them with an actual number, so we, we need that. And that's actually going to be a very nice figure to have because I think it is, that is a really good selling point uh, because it's directly related to how fast you can build, build the thing. Okay, so Emmanuel, I think, will have you do um, shrink the um, shrink the end printed pieces, shrink the two end printed pieces. Yeah, I misspelled your name there. You're in, you're in green. No, u il. No, you save. So you're in green. Um, let's see. I think we're gonna move you since. Hey, where'd that go? Um, so th so that will be <clears throat> shrink the uh, two end pieces. Um, so. So Chile, we, we, we got the build, build on Friday, Saturday. Uh, I'm going to need to provide some guidance on the Chile build, so just some hints. Uh, what else we got? So. So Jose, after the bill of materials, you think you could get to the actual 12-inch uh, version? The 12-inch version of the bill of materials, you mean? Uh, no, I wouldn't do bill of materials on that because the bill of materials is yeah. identical except for the rods. Uh, yeah, do the CAD. The assembly, the assembly we have it, yeah. yeah, I can try it. Uh, I will check it out. Yeah. The bill of materials, which is not so complicated. The instructionals, okay, it's okay, but it takes time. And uh, what was the other thing? And then the assembly that you want me to do as well. So what do you want to prioritize? Yeah, what I would prioritize, to be very clear about that, let's get the parts count because uh, that shouldn't be too bad. Because you you kind of know if you've got one frame you can know that there's four frames because there four sorry one axis if you get the axis of one frame what one ax sorry parts count of one axis um, maybe you should actually um, almost restrict yourself to that because once we have that then it's going to be pretty quick but no let's do do the do the very quick parts count tell you what why don't we stick to the unique parts count for now because you're asking what that is uh, you know i'm just trying to follow to follow you so uh right you say yeah, it, priority one uh, let's count the, the parts yeah and, that should be pretty uh, quick uh, that I mean, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's yeah, 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 yeah. Just do that. Let's so let's. Um, that, uh, yeah, and get out of the. I'm gonna put the bill of materials back in the to do. I would say do the bill of materials unique parts count and then get to the 12 inch frame, because what I'd like to do is for fri for the Friday posting like or Thursday night. I mean, I don't know if you're gonna have time by Thursday night. But if possible, we need to show that because we're talking about the construction set, we're going to offer the three different versions for the actual workshop. So we're going to offer the, the six inch print bed and the two larger machines, which which have got the eight inch print bed. So, so you actually need that before, yeah. Before yeah, so, the yeah, so we want to have those drawn up. 
in fact, I mean, if um, if we can get Cedric, I mean, I really want to put Cedric on doing the eight-inch version. You want this for this thirty? Yeah, I mean, yeah, if I, possible. I, I can do the assembly. What I have to do so far is so. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So why don't you, since the eight-inch version is the hardest, why don't we change you to? Why don't you have you do that? So so do the shrink the pieces and go right to the eight-inch version because we can work with the normal size pieces for the twelve-inch and sixteen. Yeah. Does that sound good to you? Sorry, what? What are you saying? Yeah, so because the 8-inch version is going to require the shrunk down carriages, okay. you'd need to do the first thing is you got to shrink the pieces and then do yeah. the 8-inch, the complete assembly of the 8-inch version. Yeah, okay. I can do that. Uh-huh. That will be great. If you could do that. Yeah. And in fact, that's kind of like if we show that, okay, here's our 16-inch version. And then we show the eight-inch version. That's actually would be a better contrast than showing eight-inch, than showing say the sixteen and twelve. So I would say in priority status order, the sixteen-inch is the most important because that's the most attractive, because we have that already. Then the eight-inch because it's the baby 3D printer, with all the same high-performance issues like, uh, like with the PI and auto bed leveling. So it's going to be a really sweet printer. Um, and then we have the 12 inch as the third offering. Uh, but just for like, if you talk about publicity reasons, like it's nice to see the contract between the six in, 16 inch and the eight inch, cause they're so different. You know, they're gonna look quite different cause they're, the axes are gonna be totally different, you know? So that'll be the thing. And Cedric, yeah. For Cedric, I would say uh, start working uh, if he's going to listen to this video, uh, start working on the original Prusa i3 MK2 extruder adapted to our um, to our mounting system, to our carriage, to the D3D. Yeah. So if Cedric is watching this, I'm going to email him, tell him to get on this. That's an important one uh, because we want to get to the E3D Volcano for fast prints. Right now I've got like a pretty small nozzle. It's, it's definitely slower. I want to do it, have some really, like want to optimize it for fast printing. So yeah, it's really good stuff. Go team, go. So anything else? Can I, yep. Can I ask you something? I, yeah. I, I put a sketch in the... The DVD documentation slides that you showed, just to ask you, if that it makes sense to have the magnets inside the the idler face instead of outside, and then you don't need glue. Perhaps you thought already about it. Uh, I don't understand the question. Say it again. Uh, you have to go. Just go to the 3D documentation, the slides, and go to the sixth slide. Uh, it's just a question if you thought about it already. Okay. Oh, sorry. It's about the, Let's see. Yeah, it's about, it's about the magnets. Because, yeah, the glue is, is fine, but the, I would also try to avoid glue. And right. The question is if you can put them inside, if it makes sense. And then you, you know. Okay. Do you know what? Do you, do you understand the sketch? Yeah, let me look at the sixth page. I'm loading it up right now. Sorry, I had trouble loading it. Yeah, well, you know, okay, you know where that is supposed to be? That The place to bump ideas is supposed to be the, the D3D page on on uh, Minds. Um, now, yeah, and it's been kind of slow because I think there's a little bit of few bugs in there, but we want to set up, we should either do commit to the Minds, the Open Source Ecology Network, 
or commit to Facebook so that we have a constant thread there. Now, did I crash? Are you guys, can you guys still hear me? Yeah, yeah. The printer, the printer, the printer, the printer, the printer development was was where we're supposed oh, to be. Oh, see the magnets go is where the nodes go. Okay, so yeah, let me see what what he's talking about. Actually, below the road, not not uh, not crossing with the road, but below. Just a question, right? If it makes sense. On the side. With the gluing. Um, it's the way it is right now. It's just a question, right? It's Wait, wait, wait! I don't understand. Which so this is for the um, the idler sub module. Yeah, the idler in size below the road, below the road uh, to put uh, the magnets, and then uh, you don't have to glue them. That's just an idea. It's something perhaps interesting to try later. Oh, uh, how would that work? I don't see how that would work. How? Yeah, you put the magnet, uh, and then uh, on top of the magnets you can put the rod. You know the slide, the, the sliding rod. Yeah, but the magnets are flat and the rod is round. You're thinking it would connect to that? The the rod will go uh, on top of it. You know, like this is the slide. Uh, this is a side view. Uh, and then the magnets will go below. Um. I'm not sure how you're mounting the magnets. They have to be attached. They attach yeah. magnetically to the to the metal, but where's the metal you're attaching to on the on a carriage? Yeah. So what I mean is, uh, this is the this is the road, the inside view of what I'm trying to explain. You have the sliding road hole here, and then you put the magnets here. I don't know what you're pointing to. Are you are you trying yeah, to? I, I, I'm drawing something now. So this is all. Uh, how do you say? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, we can definitely consider that, and maybe you can. Uh, no, it's whatever. Just. Can you show uh, right now, just or? To avoid Okay, um, can you show us right now or can you show us, you want to show us later? Yeah, it's, it's in the sixth slide. If you go in okay, the in the slide. sixth slide I'm looking at, it says assembly, assemble the idler submodule. No, no, you have to go to the D3D documentation, the white one that you were uh, talking about. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I was looking at your oh. assembly instructional. Oh, no, no. Okay, oh. let me take a look at that. Page six. Well, what I mean, my question was if it makes sense to uh, put the to put the, the sliding road here like this, and yeah. then the magnet, the magnets below it, you know. And why do you want to do that? Well, it's just that you don't need to glue the magnets. Yeah, but how the okay. magnets... Yeah, but that, that thing has to attach to a frame. If you're going through the plastic, then... Do you think you will lose the mag uh, you do. magnetic uh, properties? These magnets are really strong, you said. They are very strong, but they're but it's really drops off very fast once you're not on the metal. Okay, I understand. Okay, yeah, that's required. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's modifications we can do in the future, um, and we we should definitely explore them. But but once we have good ideas, we should include them. I think there are some other modifications we can do, uh, but I don't think, I mean, the system as it is right now, it's it's very sweet. It works well. So what we want to uh, do? I, I know it works well. It's not yeah. for for now. It's, it's yeah. just what, where do we document this kind of thing in a yeah. way that we don't have to talk in the meeting. Right. So for yeah. So the meetings are where we discuss a lot of the stuff. So I believe the document that we're we've got right now, which is gonna go on the D three D meeting page, I think that's probably the proper thing to do. Just keep the notes within the uh, the weekly meeting. <clears throat> it's a good thing. But yeah, leave it there. Leave it there though. Don't erase that. <laughs> I mean okay. this is 
uh, you don't want to erase anything. What you want to say on this, it's like, okay, the issue. So for someone who sees this, you want to say, okay, well, this is going to have, this is a proposed design, but it will have issues because you can't, the magnetic force drops off a lot after you go through the right. plastic and stuff like that. So you want to keep stuff like this and keep notes like that. That's actually very good. It's called design rationale. It's like, you know, the design choices that you make, you want to document them so that uh, a person who's following the project, they can actually get caught up to speed on all the things that we talked about. So that's good. All right, but that sounds great. So I think, uh, so do you guys have everything you need right now? Okay. Too soon for you? Okay. So. Yeah, uh, free, free my day so far, uh, Monday and, uh, and Friday. I see. Okay. Yeah, so get to that whenever you get the chance. But yeah, definitely we want to, as soon as we have any more materials for uh, to share with people, we can keep, I mean, part of the, the marketing is we continuously put out more materials about the project and get more people interested. So that's, that'll be fine. And then, of course, Emmanuel, it's all on you then, again. Uh, to, uh, but you're, probably, you're really good at the FreeCAD thing, so you're going to snap that out in a second. So that's good. All right. So I think that's about all. I think that's all we've got. So we're good. Any, any other questions? I'm good. Okay. I'm good, too. Sheila, any questions from you? Um, yeah, um, I would like to know um, what are your suggestions on how considering the size of the of the frame? How do you how do I um, attach the frames together? Maybe you could just send me the stuff oh, yeah. so I can get them from the laboratory on time. Yeah, so so that's a good point. I'm just gonna speak about that for a little bit. So the procedure that I see happening within the workshop itself will be to lay the, the bottom piece. So if you see the time-lapse video, basically do what I did. So you do the bottom piece, you stand the okay. four pieces up, but how do they stand? You would have to print yourself out like a little cube that you can put on the top two corners on the, on the, yeah. between two sheets, and that holds the two pieces yeah. together. So you print yourself out four yeah. of those pieces and then you fold the frame up, you hold it with those four pieces, and then you just glue it with epoxy. So if you have epoxy that's pretty runny, you can literally put like a drop of epoxy and it'll just drip down the edge. Now, because the pieces okay. that you have are so large, yeah. there might be some warping that it's not so easy to glue it. What I did here was I, I took a small one inch angle one inch angle and put magnets on yeah. that and use that to hold the frame together. So magnetic connection using angles on the sides. And then you can just put the glue. So put those angle connectors on the inside yeah. and then you can just glue it on the outside. Now you can of okay. course do the bolting together, but we bolted that together here. And because the frame is so large, you're going to have like a little wobble of the frame. You really want to get the entire edge. Uh, that will make a very strong, very good-looking frame. So, okay. so that corner piece, 3D printed corner piece, um, we want to have to, we want to generate that. Uh, maybe, do you have any time to work on that on FreeCAD? Can you? Would you be able to do that in FreeCAD, or is that another <laughs> Emmanuel? Um, get us a, that piece. No, it's 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 like five minutes. Of... Is considering like you know, with the idea challenge now is really really hectic. Okay, 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 yeah, you're. you're... You're pretty so busy. If you can send me the file. I just set it up and it's printing while I'm focusing on the stuff. Emmanuel, did you hear the corner piece? I uh, no. I was thinking why you just use the regular uh, uh, angles you use on welding. Yeah, yeah. Just do you have access? Yeah, Sheila, do you have the angle that you can get your hands on? Um, no. Um, that's why I'm asking. Like, so that I can ask them on time. For yeah. It. Because, you know, I'm a little bit constrained when it comes to the resources. I can't just go there and do it myself. I need to talk to Well, you can ask me. them. What you can do is ask them to get you a bunch of six inch, like eight pieces or like ten pieces of six inch cuts of angle that if you have the magnets, I don't know if you got the magnets. Did you get the magnets? No. 
okay so you don't have that either but it's no. doable with the magnets or with a 3d printed piece so um i would say emmanuel focus on um emmanuel why don't you just spend five minutes and get us that corner piece corner bracket um emmanuel you think you could do that as the first task Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm talking about a, it's a little cube that will you you fold up the four sides and you bound, bind the four corners simply by putting like a little cube on each corner that goes over the metal. You know, it just holds the metal in place. So okay. corner corner holder. Can you picture that? Yeah, just a cube with yeah with uh, three magnet holes. No, no, it's not magnetic. It's me mechanical. It just has an indent, so the frame slips into that that holder. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll I'll email you about that. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll document it because that's that that needs to be documented. Uh, when I have that, I can pass it on to you if you have the time. But yeah, yeah, we, we should do that. Because during the workshop itself, I think it'll be nice to just have those corner pieces. So you, you put them on top of the, the frame, and then you can just... That's all you need for the 16, 12, and 8-inch frame. You just oh, put those four yeah, little I pieces. Corner yeah. piece. Yeah, yeah. That's not magnetic. It's just got... It's, it's got an indent where the frame... It goes over the frame. So it's not... You don't have to use any magnets in there. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's easy. Yeah, it's, that's five minutes. So, yeah. Excellent, excellent. So, yeah, we're, we're moving forward well. I think that's pretty good. And um, we'll take it from there. Now we, uh, we have um, Cedric just joined us. Cedric, <laughs> you're off a little bit by an hour. But I think we can, we can probably much, pretty much quit the meeting. I think we're, yes. we're good to go for now. And I can stay on with Cedric a little bit. So thanks, guys. This is good. Uh, Cedric, right. hey, um, glad to have uh, you. Hey, you know, um, uh, uh, I, uh, I apologize because I was in the school. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, okay. I finished, uh, today I finished uh, a little bit uh, in the school. Yeah, okay. No, that's good. You can We can watch the video, and then I want to ask you if you can do one thing. We talked about what we could have you do. But the one thing that we could have you do, uh, what did you work on last week? I worked on the, uh, the mount of the extruder, but I didn't finish it. Uh -huh. I have to, um, uh, what can I say? I had very uh, many problems with the, the free cut uh, and the interface I see because when I add it sometimes I add a, a, a fastener and free card didn't work as I expect yeah so I had many pro I I make yes I make many times for uh, uh, showing what can I do to 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 work, you know, to, 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 yes, I, 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 yeah, so what for, you want to, for work around about this problem. yeah, so, so this was on the, um, let me take a look at this, so on this meeting, we had you doing the, March 13, we had the Cedric Extruder Plus Mount CAD, correct? Uh huh. Plus mount, yes, I, yes, I am working. To, yep. Um, I okay. Am just working on mount. Okay. So this uh, taking uh, many time for me because it was the first time. For uh, it was the first time to, for me to work on this uh, type of. Uh, okay. Workbench. Now, we do have the mount, the the mount CAD file, correct? Uh, you are asking me if I have finished? Well, we have that from the overall assembly, correct? Uh, 
what to what to for what to exclude the my uh, exclude not for your ex well the extruder that you have you worked on that yes but the the holder Emmanuel did the holder correct yes right so you have that file you you have access yeah Yes, the, the file that the manual uh, uploaded on 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 the wiki. Yeah. So, uh, yes, I saw it. Uh, and you're trying uh, to put it together with uh, your extruder, correct? Yes. What I mm, what can I say? Okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. The, 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 the extruder of Emmanuel is it a replacement or I, I don't understand very well. Is it a, uh, uh, did did he put it uh, because he, do, he cannot use my again my file or is it another type of extruder? No, it's the same one. Same one. So. The, okay, so what I need you to do, all you need to do right now is, can you upload yes. what you have right now so we just have a record of that to your log? Yes. Okay, so do that. Now. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, so I'm going to... Yeah. So I'm going to put that task, make sure we are keeping track of this. So, Cedric, uh, upload existing extruder. To wiki and then finish it mm -hmm. yeah finish finish that part and then okay so the next part we need you to do do you remember how we talked about the original prusa i3 extruder the one that uses the e3d nozzle do you remember that one mm. Yeah, let me uh, send you a link to that. So what we want to do is we wanted to redesign that to work with our mounting system. So that's that's a pretty um, pretty complex. I mean, it's you need to redes redesign it so you can fit it on our mount system. Yeah, and uh, can you see. send me the link? Yep. Yeah, hold on. I'm I'm getting into that. So what I'm talking about is the. Um, let me send you the link on the original. So this is. Um, what I'm talking about here, that's that's what we talked about. Let me see. There. It's in a chat box. That's the extruder. The three print files are extruder assembly. Yeah. Uh what to do to how to do to mount the Yeah. The, yes, I remember it. it yeah, well, we have to, what we want to do is take that and modify it so it works with our extruder, with our simple, so make a magnetic mount for that and make it mountable on our carriage. Yes, yes I, I look for it and... thinking that um, I will use the images, the, the pictures coming from my uh, from my uh, fake art files. I don't know if the picture will it, it, 
if it is good for taking this picture or taking two picture like this do you understand um it sounds like you're talking about instructionals i'm talking yes. about, yeah um i would like you to switch to the actual design of the of the extruder so we can use the the one i sent you with our system yes i uh, yes i understand but my my question is uh-huh. For, for doing the instructions, you need to make, to, 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 to put pictures on the instructions. You understand? The, the pictures, the images that you see on the link that you sent to me. You need to put pictures. Yes. So I will, I will ask him that uh, instead of putting these pictures, uh, I wanted to put the picture coming from pictures of the parts coming from uh, the, the, the from Africa. Yeah. For my my pieces in from my parts in Africa. So instead instead of putting this uh, this uh, this pictures the the, the 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 real pictures I will I don't know if it is good to put the pictures from Africa. Yeah. No, that's what you want to do. Yes. Okay. That's what I, I just began it, but I, I, I was thinking about the, the picture that I will put on. So, yes, I, I will use it, uh, I yes, I will use this for for for, for making the the the, the, the extruder instruction mount instruction instructions. Yeah, uh, that's good. Um, the the instruction works. Yeah. That sounds good. And Jose did a very nice template for how we can do the instructionals. So please watch this video when I upload it and then you can get yes. the links to where everything is. And for now, I also sent you the... So so that's that's the task. So you're doing an instructional on that. So let's, let's document that. Um, yes. This week I saw also a, you sent me a file about in an extruder from AliExpress. Right, and the the message the message there is the way to do that is, um, since we we can three D print that extruder ourselves, we, if we do the version like the Prusa original. So the answer to that question is the Prusa original because they already have a design for that and all we need to do is adapt it to our carriage. So that's what I'm asking you. That's why I'm sending you the information on the Prusa because that's a way to do it. It's got the E3D nozzle on it and that will be the way to go if you want to go forward because it's already a good design and it's 3D printable. Does that make sense? Uh, if I, if, if, um, wait, wait, I, um, can you repeat, uh, please? Yeah, yeah, um, the simple, um, the bottom line of all that discussion is, the way, what we want to do right now is take the Prusa original extruder yes. and mm -hmm. adapt it. To for our L3D, yep. uh, D3D printer. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, why did you send me this uh, uh, this uh, extruder? Oh, because is it a, is it a, a an extruder of uh, Kusa? 
Yeah, I, I was just saying that that's another option that's available right now, but yeah. it's not really that open source, you know? Like, it's not... We don't have the files for that. Or yes. um, it's easier to do the Prusa, which is fully... I mean, that's fully open source. Yes. Yep. It's 3D printable. The other part has got metal parts in it. This one is 3D printable. So it's easier so, to do. Yes. So, uh, what we I do uh, with it uh, is... Do you think it is not a good idea to for working with this uh, uh, extruder of AliExpress? Yeah, don't. I would say don't worry about it. It's it's a thing that we can buy off the shelf, so that we can do that. But don't worry about it because we've got a better uh, option. It's not open source. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when uh, when when you say that uh, you can use three D printer for making the three D extruder engine. I don't understand very well because some parts of the extruder are steel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have to buy those parts. Find and buy those parts, yes. Ah, so uh, what you say is the, the parts in, in plastic, we, we can... Correct. It. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, I will um, not take account the, the mail, and yes, I will not take account the mail. Yeah. Uh, so yes, it is all. Is it all? Um, yes, I will. I will watch the video and okay. yeah. do what I can do uh, more. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can watch the video for about the instructionals and as far as the yes. extruder. As soon as you're finished with what you have right now that you were working on. Please yeah. adapt the this one, the Prusa original, to D3D. So, does that make all sense? I, I, you, you. I adapt the original Prusa Prusa extruder to to what? To our printer. What? This is another task, uh, task for me. Right, so Adapt, task... Uh, okay, task yes. one is to finish yes. what you were working on, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Task two... Instructions. Right, task one was the instructions, correct? Yes. Okay, that's good. Task two is adapt the original Prusa i3 MK2 extruder. Adapt it to our 3D printer, the D3D. So I will work on the assembly, on the D to D assembly file. The 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 file that Emmanuel uploaded on the wiki. The the file called D to D CRD assembly. That, I will work the, the, to adapt to, to adapt I will take the well all you need is the carriage all you need to adapt all you need is the just the carriage it just fits on a carriage so as long as you know the carriage is where the extruder yes. fits so that's all you need to look at yes mm -hmm. anyways the the pusher uh, D three D extruder. Where is it? Where is it? I will I will judge for it. 
Well, I sent you the two links in the chat box, right? First is the what the assembly instructionals are for that in, in extruder so you can get information about it. Yes. And the second one was the 3D print files for that extruder. Ah, so I will take it to and put it in the assembly file. Yeah, but don't worry about the assembly. Just just do the extruder with mount. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, I, uh, if I understand well, I will redo another record file from the FTL. Yes. Okay, okay. I, uh, I understand. So, I will upload my... I will do, upload my... my... Uh, extruder that I, I am working now mm -hmm. on, and I will upload another extruder free card file from the STL, STL file of uh, Pusher. Yeah. And then you have to modify the. I understand. Yeah. And then you modify the Prusa to make it fit yes. on our system. To fill, yes. Yep. That sounds good. I think you sounds like you've got what you Okay, I okay, I will I will do it. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So that's that's good. So so after we hang up, I'm going to upload the video pretty soon so you can watch it later and then we okay. can go from there. And just email me if you have any questions. Keep uh Okay. Email me. Mhm. Mm Welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Well, excellent. Excellent. So yeah, watch the video because there's some good, good, good news in there. So I'll let you, I'll let you do that, and then we'll talk soon. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot, Ben. We'll we'll talk soon. Okay. Bye bye.